Hi, it's Rachel Fishback with Integrity Builders and Supply, and we are here with Swine Web today talking with Kale Cosmaker and Tom Weber from Kemp Feeds. Yes. Thank you for coming, guys. Nice to be here. We're really excited um, to showcase from Kemp Feeds a new innovation solutions group. So, um, can you guys talk about that and what is big and new about that? Well, Innovative Solutions is a relatively new uh, business unit of the Kent Nutrition Group. Um, our focus to date has been really focusing on some of Kent's proprietary feed ingredients and proprietary brands. And uh, we're taking a, a stronger look at them in terms of their science and how we can apply them um, in other applications and combinations with other ingredients. Um, at the same time, we are working with global suppliers, strategic partners, uh, to be the sales and marketing arm uh, for their nutritional technologies. And lastly, we're working with universities, other private companies to develop more new novel technologies that will be available down the line, maybe three to four years in development, but, but we hope it will be very impactful for pork producers and offer them uh, better efficiencies, more profitability, uh, a nice return on their investment. Uh, Tom, why don't you tell everybody, introduce yourself uh, and tell everyone how many years you've been with the company and your background and what brought you to Kent Feeds. Sure, I've been with the Kent Innovative Solutions team for about a year and a half now. i um, had some diverse experiences through my career, um, serving in both the feed additive business. Um, I've also had the opportunity to be a practicing swine nutritionist for a large feed company in the Midwest and also help uh, produce swine commercially. I um, also had some diverse experiences in the animal health world as well. Um, I'm a Hoosier by native, uh, currently living in Northwest Ohio. So. <laughs> nice. And Kale, why don't you introduce yourself yeah. and your background with the company? Sure, you bet. So, uh, Kale Cosmaker, I'm the sales director for the Innovative Solutions Group. Uh, I've been with the Kent Nutrition Group for a combined 10 years. Uh, I was with them previously as a uh, district sales manager in Northwest Illinois where I currently reside and then took a commercial products manager position with the company which was based out of our headquarters in Muscatine, Iowa. Uh, took some uh, time off there at Kent to work for a global vitamin and premix supplier uh, which was a great experience but uh, really happy to have the opportunity to bring some of that experience back with Kent, join the company uh, once again, which is a, a tremendous privately owned, family owned company and uh, here to bring that experience uh, in terms of building a new feed additive division uh, with the Innovative Solutions. So those of you out there that are not familiar with Kent Feeds history, uh, why don't you tell them a little bit about Kent Feeds when they started? Um... Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. It's. Um, Kent uh, Feeds itself, uh, which is under operates under the Kent, the Kent Nutrition Group, uh, has been really that's how the company started as a small feed company in Indianola, Iowa, uh, over 90 years ago, and it, since then it's really expanded into uh, nine uh, animal feed manufacturing plants in the Midwest and four on the East Coast under the under the the Blue Seal brand. So. Primarily, the, the Kent feeds are marketed under the Kent brand in the Midwest, and Blue Seal brands typically are the brands for our companion animals and some of our retail stores out there on the East Coast. And I think what's really interesting about the company in general that perhaps not a lot of people realize is uh, the size and scope of, of Kent Corporation itself. It in itself is made up of four uh, diverse business units and Kent Feeds is just one of those and again that's how it started but the other business groups include Grain Processing Corporation which is a leader in the corn wet milling industry uh, Precision Foods Ingredients which make high quality uh, ingredients for the food and, food and beverage industry and the Pet Group which actually makes what they call their world's best cat litter which is marketed on the primarily on the east and west coast, but it's a byproduct of uh, grain processing's wet milling business. Um, it's a very high quality cat litter, 
Uh, it's biodegradable, and so you can you can flush it down the toilet in the high-rise apartments in the in in, in the big city environment. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a very diverse company in general, and and Kent is is the oldest company uh, of the four, and um, but they really have evolved over the years. I will say, being a farm kid that grew up in Southeast Iowa, yeah. it has been so nice to see <laughs> that logo um, yeah. throughout the decades. And yep. even going from feeding livestock when I was younger on my family farm to, yep. uh, you know, my kids doing show cattle and show livestock. Yep, yep. And then also being a row crop farmer myself selling to GPC. So it's yep. pretty nice to have those small rural ties to yep. the area. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the dealership network is is a big part, still is, of, of Kent's business today. And then like what, what Dr. Weber and I are doing with the Innovative Solution Group, just complements that even further as far as their annual, excuse me, their animal feed manufacturing business. We're very fortunate in this part of the world to have a company like that still around. So, yep. so why don't you go into more detail about the Innovation Solutions Group? What made Kent Feeds uh, start that group? Sure. So it was a vision um, of the leadership team to put more of a focus for, uh, from a sales and marketing effort, in particular on some proprietary uh, ingredients that they have. And then also to, to build on top of that, um, again, with developing more new and novel technologies that are more in the feed additive space. So again, Kent's core business is, is feed manufacturing, uh, but those feed additives that we bring into our portfolio, uh, they can utilize in their, their feed formulations for their brands. And we also then have an opportunity to reach a market that Kent traditionally does not today as much, and that's having micro ingredients that are available direct to producers and even other nutrition companies. So it's really expanding their nutrition business. And Tom, can you give us an example of a camp proprietary uh, ingredient? Sure. Um, one proprietary ingredient that the Kent Nutrition Group has been utilizing for several years and that the Innovative Solutions Group wants to take out to a broader audience for use and ability to capitalize on the benefits is what is known as a humic substance. Through about 15 years of research, Kent has found that it improves livability in finishing pigs by roughly anywhere from 10 to 20 percent from a, on a relative basis. So that's an example of one of the technologies that we're working on, both having an understanding of how it works and maybe some added applications as well in terms of combining it with some other active ingredients that we can leverage from a synergistic benefit perspective. And how is that beneficial for the pork producer, the integrator? How, how is that? Effective? Sure, sure. We know that over the past decade or so that the trend for pig livability has not been moving in the right direction on an industry-wide basis. So this is something that may help move the needle a little bit in that area in terms of reducing some of those mortality and maybe help the animal deal with some of these health challenges and other stressors out in the barns. So. We feel that you know we may be able to play a, a, at least a small part and help solve some of those mortality-related issues ongoing in the industry these days. And Kale, um, with this being rural pork, what are some? What would be a recommendation or top three products that you guys put out there that you guys like to talk about? Or oh sure, yep. So being a relatively new business in general, most of our products are are new. Um, Tom had mentioned about our our humic substance and uh, that is one that we are really focusing on yep. and uh, and combining it with some some other fatty acids and some other different ingredients um, as Tom mentioned uh, but that's an interesting one because um, it's a naturally occurring organic material and by AFCO definition it's called reed sedge peat and uh, and humic substances are, are widely known um, for having antioxidant and anti-inflammatory uh, properties, and 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 we've actually confirmed that with, with a lot of the research that that we've uh, done over the past the past 15 years. Uh, and as an example, Tom himself uh, did some work uh, with the humic substance before he joined Kent, and 
yeah, I've come full circle. And, and uh, we refer to the ingredient itself, so getting to the point of your question, one of our, our top products or one that we're focusing on is called MFG 150. And uh, again, some, some work that Tom did early on in his career, unknowingly, going to be coming back to support it, where we fed the MFG 150 to nursery pigs. And in, in fact, what we did is, is we, we increased the glutathione level in those pigs, which glutathione is a, a powerful endogenous antioxidant. And so we think it's very beneficial in that regard. And then when we know anytime you can mitigate or uh, uh, inflammation, you're just going to improve the overall digestive health and immune support with animals as well. So long answer, focusing on the MFG 150. And then would like to point out that uh, Innovative Solutions in the Cat Nutrition Group is the North, exclusive North American distributor for uh, Chromax brand chromium picolinate. Um, Chroma, or excuse me, chromium is an essential trace mineral. It helps uh, facilitate insulin sensitivity, glucose uptake, so glucose at the cellular level, so glucose is, is an energy source. A um, lot, of, lot of good research and data behind that. And I guess a third product, if you will, is really one that we don't have out on the market yet that, that we're developing with a, with a university. Uh, really novel technology. It came, it came to them and to us through a, a, a breakthrough in a microbiome, swine microbiome discovery. Um, some, some lactic acid producing bacteria that we're, we're working hard toward potential commercialization as a probiotic or even potentially as a postbiotic. But uh, we're excited about that. And Tom, what would you like to expand any more to what Kale said? Or sure, sure. Um, the one thing I would expand on in terms of the humic substance is we've also got some fairly compelling research data when it is administered by the drinking water. So we are working on some water-based product applications. And as a matter of fact, we've got a research abstract that's going to be presented at the upcoming National Animal Science meetings next month. A series of three studies showing some pretty profound reductions in nursery pig mortality when the humic substance is administered by the drinking water. And is that something, do you know the dates or locations of that? People um, that... The meeting is actually uh, mid-July in Albuquerque. What's the vibe you're feeling for World Pork? Expo 2023, and what excites you about being here? Um, it, it's obviously good to see uh, people again, obviously in a post-COVID world, to see people out and get to see some folks that I haven't seen in a couple of years, especially from an international perspective. For me, it, it, I've spent over 30 years in some fashion in, uh, in, in the swine industry, so for me it's just, it's, it's always good to come back and see the people because the people have been you know throughout my career um, have, have really been the resilient part of, of, of the pork industry it's, it's really good to come back and, and see everyone um, and then see all the different the different technologies and, and the advancements that we we, we continue to make it, it, it's, um, it's it's very impressive um, but yeah it's just uh, it's it's a staple every June uh, for, for myself and a, and a lot of people are in our industry and and uh, you know I really think it's it's also you know obviously there's the trade show um, and there's the information and there's the seminars um, and, it, and it's been that way for some time but we've also kind of seen World Pork Expo really kind of transi transition into a social event too where, we're, where our, our industry just gets together and that's good to see. It is. It's nice to come back here um, to see people that you either talk on the phone, via email, newsletter, and yeah. have, have that communication face to face. It's always nice. Yeah. What are some hot topics going on uh, in the pork industry from your point of view? Um, obviously, the challenges with profitability over the past couple months or so. You know, obviously, some concerns around uh, volatility in the feed ingredient space. And then I would say some of the ongoing health challenges and what can we do to uh, improve livability in the swine herd? Really, don't have a lot more to add than, than what, what Tom has. Um, you know, obviously, the today's environment, you know, the, the profitability is probably a, you know a, a, certainly a weighing concern. 
But I think, you know, we can't ignore the fact, too, that here just recently, uh, you know, with the court upholding Prop 12, you know, that, that, that brings a lot of, you know, questions into our industry. You have, you know, one state that's able to do that. Is, is that going to continue by state? And, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm confident in the industry. I'm, I'm confident in, in our producers. They're, They've always been resilient, but that certainly is a hot topic, and I know it's it, it's on the minds of, of a lot of people here. Absolutely. What exciting things in the future do you guys see happening for Kemp Feeds, or that excites you about this industry? Um, obviously, the amount of uh, and opportunity for novel innovation to enter the industry. You know, I think we're still somewhat in the information age. You know, and what. Can we do with this information with new tools such as artificial intelligence? You know, could this be a way to help, you know, improve some of the labor challenges in the industry? You know, I think there's just the opportunity for utilizing some of the new tools that are out there, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And, and just purely from a a company perspective and what looks to be exciting and what looks to be an opportunity is, is again, is, is our company's, you know, decision that, you know, they really giving back to an industry that they've been part of for so long and, and making that commitment to, to form this new business group, Innovative Solutions, and invest in technologies that are going to help producers uh, be more efficient and, and be more profitable. And do either of you have any closing thoughts, last minute words that you'd like to put out there to the pork industry? Um, no, I just, no, again, very, very proud, uh, very, very glad to be part of this industry. I, I have, as I mentioned, for, for several years. And and really kudos, as I mentioned in an earlier statement, about some, some concerns around Prop 12. But really kudos to a lot of the, the organizations, you know, the National Pork Board, the National Pork Producers Council, and all those that do a lot day in, day out. Um, so that isn't weighing as much on our minds and, and our voices, this industry's voice is being heard um, because I think too many times when um, we have outside forces dictating to us what is sustainable and I think our industry in general, the way that we've advanced through the years and, and how you know more efficient that we are and, and how more, you know, more profitable we can be when the, when the market's on the right condition is, 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 is really an example of sustainability. We've been there, done that, and we just need to continue um, you know, to, to voice that, that we are experts in, in what we do. And, and I do think that's kind of a nice intro or conversation talking point on telling your story, um, not being afraid to stand up and say something if you see something and just informing the public on how we farm and how technology has greatly benefited our industry as a whole. Well, thank you, Tom, Kale, for taking the time to sit down with Rachel here at Integrity Builders and Supply and SwineWeb. We truly appreciate the opportunity to talk more about your products and your company.